flares out of my airplane. So these uh, small flares are popping out of my airplane about once every three seconds. And Witt, my wingman, who is several thousand feet behind me, but looking at me and covering me, he says, hey, PG, I think you're dropping flares on their heads. And I look down, and here in the middle of the desert, probably two or 300 yards away from any vehicle of any kind, is probably, I don't know, 50 to 100 Iraqis standing out in the middle of the desert, looking up at my airplane with their hands up, trying to surrender my airplane. As the ceasefire approaches, the tempo of American air assaults becomes brutally intense. It was really just a turkey shoot because those guys were running away and we just pick a vehicle that was trying to get away and shoot a Maverick or drop a bomb or strafe it and uh, try and take it out uh, just to, to destroy as much equipment as we could. Congratulations, man. Maybe the last Panther combat flight. I think so. That's what it sounds like. It's that it's, uh, we're toast. They kicked us out of the area at 730. So we're done with the hogs. Take it to the house. Despite its proven ability, the warthog is still headed to the slaughterhouse. It is unlikely that any A-10s will survive the Air Force's ongoing trend toward high-tech weaponry. The airplane fulfills a low-tech requirement that now is not going to be replaced. We are replacing A-10s with F-16s. Many people think this is a big mistake. Can the F-16 do the job? You can hang some pods on the airplane, you can do the things, but the F-16 is a fragile airplane compared to an A-10. The A-10 idea was to get in close with a gun and let the pilot decide what he's going to shoot and use his brain more than the computer. The low-tech end of war will never disappear. You'll always have to confront the guy on the ground with a rifle or a tank or a truck or an artillery piece. And the A-10 does this marvelously. The war is over today and I'm going home tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is, uh, all of you are always welcome in my home, wherever that may be. And uh, I want you to know, I'm gonna be praying for all you guys to get home real soon. And uh, I'm gonna continue to pray for Sif and, uh, and for sweetness until they're back with us. But one A-10 pilot of the 353rd would not be coming home. As Rob Sweet and other American POWs are released, the Iraqis relay news that Sif, Captain Steve Phyllis, was killed in action on February 15th, his warthog knocked out of the sky by an Iraqi surface-to-air missile. live together for seven months you're gonna get pretty close with people and then when you go through the experience of losing somebody in our case temporarily losing sweetness Rob Sweet the PO, our POW and then uh, losing Sif who was killed in action uh, that's difficult as well uh, and, and that also draws a squadron together to go through something like that uh, it, it's kind of a harsh reminder that in the middle of this this techno war that people want to call it uh, there, there was a human cost. Certainly it wasn't as costly as other places we've been, but uh, there was a cost, and it was a very personal cost. Uh, and to come back and remember that we didn't bring everybody home. We did not come home with everybody we left with. The flight into Myrtle Beach was, was awesome. Uh, we got on the ground and there was just people just lying in the roads and we got the land pull in, ran through a, 
a sprinkler system. They had the, their big fire trucks. They had blue water in it. That was our, our squad in color. And you know, so we were pretty choked up getting out and our families running over and getting big hugs from our kids, which we hadn't seen in the whole seven months. And it was good to be home. Coming up next, fly some of the fastest military aircraft around, examine the fighter on Air Power Showdown. Then we rely on it for our good days and our bad ones. More than just the forecast, take a scientific look at weather on Discover Magazine.